right guys today i want to talk to you about shoes shoes for the mountains what kind of shoes are there and when to use which kind of shoe yeah so where do we start um these are all the shoes i'm using in the mountains depending on what i'm doing and um, for which terrain or which surface or at which altitude I'm climbing. I left a little gap here because there's a certain category that is very, very, very often used, made probably the most uh, uh, commonly used shoe that I, but that I'm not using, but I'll talk about that. But yeah, this is the variety of shoes I use when I go into the mountains. And today I wanna explain you uh, in which terrain, for which activity I use which shoe. I'll just start with um, climbing shoes. So this is your standard climbing shoe. This is a just standard La Sportiva beginner shoe. If you don't know what you're doing in a wall, in a uh, if you climb with a rope and um, let's say climb four or five, six, seventh grade and higher, but you don't really know what you're doing, this is a, a good basic shoe. It's a climbing shoe. So um, what I usually do is I have them attached to some of my climbing gear so I don't forget anything. You know, when I go climbing, I that way I always make sure that I have everything with me and I don't forget anything. So yeah, these shoes are for rock climbing. Um, they're usually always a little bit smaller um, because that way when you're climbing, you have this like banana shaped effect while climbing in the rocks, in the wall, and therefore you can be more precise and have a more stiff step and accurate step. And I would say the main feature of these um, climbing shoes is probably that this part of the sole is quite hard, it's quite stiff, and you have a great way to um, use the steps, even if it's a just the slightest uh, or as, uh, tiniest amount of space uh, available to you, you can really like press your feet uh, to the wall and get some good grip. So yeah, these are climbing shoes. Um, if you're already better at climbing or advanced climbing, um, you can spend more money and be uh, get better climbing shoes. But as a beginner, especially if you start rock climbing uh, at the first place, I would recommend buy a very cheap, climbing shoe because you you don't know what you're doing you don't know how to use your feet properly uh, properly you will um, scrub off a lot of the material and you will eventually need new shoes so therefore I suggest start with a cheap one learn what you're doing learn how to use your feet at all and once you kind of have an idea of what you're doing in a wall then you could probably go and buy a more expensive ones but if you don't know what you're doing don't spend money on expensive ones learn first how to use them and then um, get better ones so if you are going mountain hiking let's say um, there are different kinds of terrain you know depending if there is a, a road or if there is not a road at all or, or if there's just a path or sometimes there's even no path at all and depending on what the surface is and what the terrain is we need different mountaineering shoes so the most commonly used shoe definitely is um, the one that is in between those two this is um, the normal mountaineering boot you know it goes a little bit higher up your ankle so your ankle is secured it has a a hard sole but uh, and um, uh, bottom so you uh, are secure and you you don't feel every stone and you don't um, yeah uh, stumble or anything so I personally I also started with this kind of mountaineering shoe you know that was protecting my ankle and was quite high but the problem with that shoe also is um, first of all they're quite heavy you know and uh, you have to do every step you know uh, of altitude with your feet so they can be quite exhausting uh, because they are so heavy and also sometimes they are too stiff you know they you 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 notice after a few hours of walking in them you know your your feet start hurting and you you just want to get rid of them as soon as possible and that's the reason why I for example switched my shoes completely 
Um, I don't use this category of shoe anymore because um, I feel safe and comfortable enough to walk in that terrain uh, if there's no path at all and rock climbing. I always only use shoes like these or like these. These are like trail running shoes. Um, the sole is still hard enough for mountaineering activity uh, but not as loose as a, a, a normal sneaker for example but still they're quite comfortable and it's just amazing to walk in them even after 10 or 12 hours of walking in your shoes you feel comfortable and yeah ha and, and your, your, your feet uh, feel good and you can basically still do anything you need you know you have a good uh, profile back uh, down here and you can even do some climbing or some scrambling uh, without it being too slippery so yeah this is my personal choice and uh, the go-to shoe I'm using for most um, mountain climbing in, in, a, in a rocky terrain um, yeah this is my my go-to shoe but others um, have a different opinion and they do that and it's totally fine so let's say if you are willing to go to higher mountains let's say 3500 meters plus 4000 meters plus you have to go on a glacier you get in contact with ice and snow usually what you will need are crampons yep so in order to move on a glacier or in the snow crampons are necessary and in order to be able to fit crampons to your shoe you need a, a special shoe that is designed for actually taking crampons so therefore this is a super classic La Sportiva shoe almost everyone has used this shoe or, or, or knows this shoe or seen this shoe or if you're in an, an, an alpine hut you will see plenty of these yellow uh, La Sportiva shoes because a lot of people use them the main feature of this is that the sole is so stiff you cannot even bend it at all okay it's so hard it's so stiff um, that there is like no room to wiggle and that um, um, offers you a very 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 solid step and very 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 secure step even without crampons you can move very very good in the snow or on a glacier because you have a great way to just ram your feet into the snow and um, you, you don't have to decide to use the crampons right away when you get in contact with snow because these shoes are so good you can walk quite a while on the glacier on the snow depending on the circumstances of course before you actually have to put on your crampons but once it's getting too steep or too icy you eventually have to switch to the crampons and then as you can see here you have like uh, this little nose this little line here at the front and also at the back and these are made so you can uh, go into the shoe <clears throat> usually you're in there all right exactly and then you can see um, this part of the metal secures the shoe on this side and back here hold me hold on so you can see this little thing um, hold on let me do like that you put it in here it snaps and then you can start uh, securing this shoe and that way as you can see you can walk on a glacier and um, feel more comfortable more secure and do all kinds of crazy stuff in the mountains so my personal strategy is because as you saw the sole uh, of these shoes is super 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 hard and super stiff walking in these shoes for a while is painful for your feet okay uh, <laughs> I don't know after I spend the whole day in these shoes my feet are just so sore and uh, hurt so much and I really want to get out of these shoes so what I always do is I always whenever I go on a glacier on a or on a higher altitude uh, mountaineering trip I always have two pairs of shoes I wear these shoes for example or these shoes or depending on the terrain even sneakers I wear them all the time because that's the most comfortable for my feet and just when I'm moving on a glacier on the snow um, that really the last second I really have to switch to these shoes then I will actually switch I put these uh, in my rucksack or attach them on the outside of my rucksack and then I'm switching to these shoes and that way 
my feet are very 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 happy with me because it's so much easier for my feet and so much less pain and yeah i can just highly recommend to you try the strategy because um it's a it's a really good way and your your feet will thank you at the end of the day and that also goes for when i'm getting off the glacier you know and you get rid of the crampons so most people they get rid of the crampons and then they keep walking in these shoes i'm not doing that as soon as i'm getting off the glacier i'm also getting my feet out of these shoes and i switch to more comfortable shoes like these and it's just a blessing i love it every 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 time so yeah this is the way i go about it and i can highly recommend this style um because it's so good there was just one last thing that came to my mind talking about the the sole and how stiff they are so with this shoe for example um again the sole is very very stiff but if you walk with this shoe uh, uh on the rocks a lot and these are basically made for the glacier and um, wearing crampons but if you walk too much on the rocks with them uh, the the whole uh, profile of the shoe um, gets lost over time as you can see and um, yeah you can have a new profile you can send it back to the to uh, La Sportiva or, or the, the shoe manufacturer and get a new one or you can just as I do um, switch the shoe and therefore you can actually um, protect the shoe the longevity of your shoe and um, therefore yeah you don't have to buy new ones because these are expensive you know um, they come at like 380 euros plus usually sometimes 400 500 euros so that gets expensive quite a lot so you may want to conserve these as long and as much as possible yeah just a uh, an aspect to think about so you can use these shoes i would say up to six thousand meters maybe even six and a half thousand meters but once you get closer to the seven thousand meter mark and it gets very 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 cold then you probably have to switch to an expedition shoe like this one so this these shoes this is the La Sportiva Olympus Mons Ice Cube. This is the state of the art. Um, and yeah, probably one of the best um, expedition and high altitude shoes you can wear right now. Because these shoes have great features to keep your feet warm. So let's have a look what is going on with these shoes. So first of all, you have a, how do you say that in English? In German, you call it Gamasche, Gamash, gam, whatever, some kind of, um, yeah, protective uh, layer that is uh, going over your ankle. Make sure no snow is getting into your shoe and you're secure from higher snow. But um, yeah, another quite important feature is like the inner shoe. So this shoe comes with two more inner shoes. This one I personally never used inside that shoe when I climbed on uh, my first 8000er. I used this one in the tent, in the base camp. Uh, but I never really used this shoe inside there because look at this there is uh, hold on there is another inner shoe and this is actually super important and most modern expedition shoes have this um, the reasoning is um, your feet get very 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 cold up there because it's super cold and also you're moving kind of slowly up there depending if you're using oxygen or not but you're moving so slow your heart rate is not enough to uh, circulate and transport all the blood through your body and the first things that get cold are your fingers and your feet or your toes and these are the first ones usually that you lose when they get too cold so this is awesome because when you sleep overnight in your tent keep these in your tent that way they stay kind of warm and what i usually do is in the night before the summit or when before i go into my shoes the next morning i am usually sleeping with these shoes on you know on my feet or i have them at least in my sleeping bag close to my body so they stay warm last night before going to the summit uh the down suit is on my inner boots of my La Sportiva shoes are on 
uh, I will be sleeping additionally in the sleeping bag. I won't use the uh, rucksack. Here are my shoes. I try to keep them close so they are not too cold tomorrow morning. My harness, my helmet. This is my emergency oxygen bottle in case I feel bad and at night, but I'm not gonna take it to the summit. Um, yeah, and that's me. I'm very exhausted. I didn't have enough sleep last night. This could probably cost me the summit. We will see if I get proper sleep tonight and then um, if I can reach the summit. Yeah, so it's about uh, six o'clock, maybe five o'clock. I don't know, not six o'clock. And I'm um, gonna go to bed now. Uh, the alarm goes 2, 3 a.m. Then I put on my equipment and then I try to summit my first 8,000 meter mountain without oxygen. Let's see how it goes. So that way what happens is they're already warm. I put them on or I already have them on, go out of my sleeping bag. I go into these shoes right now and they are warm in the morning you know when it's super cold outside minus 20 minus 30 degrees celsius and that way you already have warm feet but then also you have to start moving right away as soon as possible otherwise you know the whole system gets cold but um yeah this is super super important very beneficial and the way to actually start your climb with warm feet um and there are a lot of great features to this one there's like a a aluminum reflect uh, uh, infrared reflecting um, uh, foil in there I don't know if you can see that through the camera but that also helps um, with the isol isolation and keeping your your heat inside the shoe you have a super nice and easy um, quick fix system so you can even do that with um, with gloves or cuffs because um, uh, closing closing the shoes with with uh, with these, how do you say, bands? There's probably an English term, I don't know. It's just embarrassing, <laughs> okay. But um, yeah, this has a super easy quick fix system. You can just pull them, you know, and then they're loose and you can open them or you can then um, fix shade them and then you can close them. That's super nice. And also they added like a, um, the zipper has a certain um, shape so you can easily pull them up to, but to be quite honest with you once you're in there sometimes it's a little bit tricky to get it up to be completely honest with you but yeah um, after a little bit of practice and exercising um, that works just fine and yeah these are basically made for um, 7000 meters plus I would say as you can see again they have the same features here and here for the crampons and um, yeah, I would say probably these are state of the art, but of course there are other good shoes. Um, other 8000er mountaineers, alpinists or solo climbers that are very, very fast, that have a kind of a speedy style, uh, like let's say Uli Steck for example, what they use is they also had kind of an expedition shoe, but not as heavy as this one is and not as big as this one is. They had some kind of hybrid in between these two so it was still warm enough, it was still hard enough and stiff enough. You could still attach all the gear, the crampons to it, but they were not as big and heavy and ch uh, clunky and they could move faster. And this is also a strategy that you can use if you're going 7000 plus, but you really have to do, uh, know what you're doing and you have to be very experienced and very fast. Because I think with these shoes you have less isolation and, and uh, temperature cover and therefore it's um, it's more possible that you get colder feet but you can counter that with just moving fast so if you're a very 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 fast person speedy climber but this is just point uh, one percent uh, of, of mountaineers anyways but um, yeah you can get away with that strategy with a very light and speedy shoe um, but you have to be moving constantly, your body needs to move, so you're constantly circulating the blood and your feet stay warm. Otherwise, um, your feet get cold too fast and you might lose your toes and you don't wanna want that to happen. So another strategy I used on my first 8000er without oxygen is... Uh, and my, some people of you may think this is a, a, a cheater move, a cheater strategy or not, and that is not real alpinism. 
maybe sure um, but I was using a heating sole in there so these are just standard um, inlays or soles you can put in there they have a, a wire into it and a battery attached to your ankle and they keep your feet warm for uh, let's say six to eight hours so I use these uh, um, heating soles those feet warmers because I really didn't want to lose any toes and I didn't want to have to turn around only because my feet are cold you know there are so many mountaineers they are at 8,000 400 meters closed or let's say only like 200 meters short of the summit they are still strong the weather is good their condition is good and everything but they can already uh, feel their feet or not feel their feet anymore they're numb they're um, yeah they cannot feel them anymore and they have a serious risk of losing their toes and then they have to turn around just because their feet got cold and in order to avoid that I have heating soles in my shoes uh, when I go uh, higher than 8000 or on th uh, summit day and that is uh, quite a nice perk especially you know you have to you have to consider you you're starting usually at 12 o'clock and uh, at midnight so until the sun goes up you are at least five six seven hours in the ice in the snow uh, without sun you know and it's super super cold up there and uh, um, heating soles can compensate for that time for that amount uh, in the night and once the sun comes up usually you get warmer your body gets warmer and your 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 feet and everything gets warmer again but until the sun gets up you're freezing cold and this is quite problematic and so many mountaineers had to turn around because of cold feet and they didn't want to risk to lose any toes and yeah expeditions can be expensive uh, thousands of uh, dollars or euros or whatever currency got lost because people had to turn around just because of cold feet so yeah maybe think about that and consider that as well having heating soles in your shoes as well if you want to know more about that and how i did it uh, feel free let me know in the comments if you want to know more about heating soles and um, cold feet um, one more feature I have to talk about is you see these crampons here let's talk a little bit more about crampons not too much but as you can see these crampons here have this shape these spikes and um, um, how the, the spikes are arranged with this shoe or these crampons and these nice crampons here have a have a um, different uh, geometry of the spikes as you can see here they are sh uh, shaped like these and the left ones are shaped like this the main reason is this is for a standard walking on a glacier you know not too steep of a surface and um, no special climbing required but if you're actually going into more ice climbing more technical routes more steep routes and maybe into vertical ice um, these are super helpful because that way you can really um, use these and use the small um, rocks for example to, to, to stand on or you can ram uh, your uh, crampon or your feet into the ice wall and actually have a, have, a, have, a, have a good step. So these are the differences of crampons and which ones to use for which circumstance. So what else do we have left? Yeah, let me know if I forgot something special about any of these shoes. Um, if you want to know more about some kind of shoe. Um, and then I'll go into depth. Uh, what else do we have? <laughs> what do you think about these one? These are uh, down booties. They are also for um, expeditions. Uh, if you're in base camp and you want to have warm feet. Um, these are quite nice. They have downs. And once your feet are in there or maybe in the tent. It's super nice and comfy, maybe unnecessary, but hey, uh, on an expedition, you spend quite a lot of time in the base camp and you get cold feet. So these can get quite comfy. So yeah, I, 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 I got these to, I, I took these with me to Everest base camp because they were just so comfy and I really enjoyed having them. Um, yeah, what else? Oh yeah, maybe you haven't heard of these ones. These are special shoes for a very special purpose. These are flip-flops and they are best used when you're on a beach. Or maybe, you, <laughs> no, actually your bare feet are best used on a beach. But yeah, I'm just kidding. These are, these are holiday shoes. All right, yeah, in general, the kind of shoe 
uh, is mainly um, determined of how stiff and how hard the soul actually is, how comfortable you feel and how high or how tricky the terrain is. The lower, the easier terrain, the more soft you can go, you know, and actually have a good time and very, very relaxed time and uh, protect your feet and make it comfy for your feet. Um, a little bit more stiff would probably this one, you know, if you're going back to a, a road, you know, you can go on this one. But yeah, then you have this middle section shoe. I'm gonna show a picture again of that one. I'm not using, it's just too heavy for my style. It's too clunky, it's too big. And I don't need the extra safety around my ankle. I don't need that. But um, for a beginner, if you're unsure, if you don't feel comfortable in the mountains, I would highly recommend to get this middle class of shoe that actually is still going over your ankle and protects your ankle. Yeah, then of course, super hard, so you're comfortable in snow and ice. And then the final one is expedition boots. And yeah, that is all about, I could think about right now for mountaineering shoes. Let me know if uh, you want me to add something, if you want more information about some of these, if you want to see and learn and uh, how to put on a crampon of one, uh, on one of these shoes. Yeah, just let me know and I can go in depth and explain it yeah, in more detail. All right, and um, yeah, let me know what kind of shoe you are using. Do you have a certain strategy that you like to use? Maybe you have a strategy like, like this or you, you say, nah, I just use uh, one shoe all over the uh, 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 all the time then yeah let me know all right i am going to run my 10k now and do some training and then um yeah eat something all right bye bye guys